Dacă nu zidește Domnul o casă, degeaba lucrează cei ce o zidesc. Ajutorul nostru este numele Domnului care a făcut cerurile și pământul. Iubite biserică, suntem adunați aici în prezența Lui Dumnezeu și acestor mulți martori pentru a oficia căsătoria religioasă a fratelui Timon cu sora Ilinca. Căsătoria este o instituție sacră, fondată de Dumnezeu pentru binele societății umane, în care cei doi să găsească ajutor, compasiune reciprocă, sprijin, în care să crească copiii care sunt un dar la Dumnezeu. Ne rugăm ca Dumnezeu să binecuvânteze pe acești doi tineri care intră în această instituție sfântă a căsătoriei. Uh, my beloved, we are gathered here in the presence of God and these witnesses to officiate the marriage of Timonin and Ilinka. Marriage is a holy relationship instituted by God and presented in the scriptures as being sacred, symbolizing the union, spiritual union of Christ with his church. Therefore, it cannot be entered into in a negligent manner, but with reverence, knowing its purpose. Marriage has been instituted as a relationship for life in which the husband and his wife should find help and comfort in each other. Marriage is the sacred place where children who are the gift from the Lord should be raised in godliness and is an institution established for the happiness of the human society, which will be stable only when marriage is held in high esteem. Now, knowing that these two people are going to enter into this holy relationship, let us pray that the Lord would bless them. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you that Tim and Alinka get to play dress up today for a wedding that is yet to come. Um, the wedding between our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and his bride, the church. Lord, we pray, we long for that day when you will dress up us as the church in white. Um, we can't wear white today, uh, but Lord, only through Christ uh, can you put us, can you clothe us in white. And so we thank you for that. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will be present here today. I pray that uh, your Holy Spirit will fill Tim and Alinka so that they can have peace, um, that they can have joy, that they can rest in this moment and know uh, that you bless this, um, that you are pleased with marriage um, and that you love what they're entering into. I pray, Lord, that uh, we, the people who get to sit here and watch, um, will be filled with the Holy Spirit as well and we will leave this place praising the name of Jesus Christ. Um, and longing for the day when he will come to his bride, the church. And Lord, I pray that Tim and Alinka will be filled up with the Holy Spirit today yes, and that the name of Christ will be on their lips so that when they tell others in the months and years to come about their wedding day, that as they speak of it, the name of Jesus will be right there, um, right there on their lips. So, Lord, I pray uh, your blessing upon this day. I pray your blessing upon these two people and the journey that you are starting them on. Bless us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. pray. Amen. Amen. The word of God, <clears throat> starting in Ephesians 5:19. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wife just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of her water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, <clears throat> not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that, he, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh but nourishes and cherishes, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. 
For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall be <clears throat> become one flesh. That is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Amen. Amen. You may be seated and enjoy this ceremony. I mean, uh, if you know the Romanian language. <laughs> because the rest of the service is going to be held in the sacred Romanian language. <laughs> uh, last week I have uh, been participating in a wedding ceremony. And again, there were uh, some English speaking people. And the pastor said, uh, those who do not understand Romanian, I have an advice, uh, advice for you, learn it. Um, so uh, here we are. Uh, what language do you think they are going to speak in their family? You are going to say uh, a language both, under both of them understand. And which is that language? Language of love, yes. <laughs> there is a book called The Five Languages of Love by Gary Chapman. And I recommend it to them and to each one who is married. Uh, we are going to rejoice here by God's grace and the presence of so many witnesses and uh, listening to his word and so on. So first we're going to have a group of girls who are going to praise the Lord with a song.
Amen. Most of us have uh, understood the message of the songs, although no words were used. Uh, we have a common language, as I said. It's the language we have been uh, learned to speak since we have known Jesus as our Savior. Um, we are supposed to sing a song together now. I don't know if you can without any rehearsal, but the song is over here. Oh, love that will not let me go. Shall we try? Let's stand up and uh, try the first two stanzas. The third one is only for them later on in marriage. Maybe see it. We all who are here have been invited at this wedding, and we have responded to this invitation knowing that the wedding is a celebration of joy, happiness, fellowship around a table which is redundant with good food, and the possibility to express our love for each other and for our Lord Jesus Christ. We love to be invited to such celebrations because we anticipate the joy of participating in it. More than that, we feel honored to be invited to weddings, especially when the wedding is an important one. We know that the higher the importance of a wedding is, the harder it is to get an invitation. Our Lord Jesus has taken the time to talk at one meeting about a wedding that was very strange. It was a royal wedding, yet the people who thought they were worthy of the invitation ended up being excluded from this royal wedding. And the people who never dreamed of being invited, who never expected to be invited, were invited and by accepting the invitation participated in that royal wedding. Everything was strange about that wedding. The right people excluded and the wrong people participated. Now I don't want to spoil this story telling you about it in my words, but I want, I want you to listen to the words of Jesus as he tells us this story in Matthew 22, first 14 verses. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it. And went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully, spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wrought, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then said he to his servants, The wedding is ready. But they which were bidden were not worthy. 
Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all, as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This parable has unusual things that intrigue us. It is not a common wedding, as I said, but a royal one. The son of the king is getting married. What an honor to be invited to such an event. In the Old Testament, we read that Solomon gave his guest rich gifts that were fit for a king like him. The wedding Jesus is talking about is royal. Can we imagine such a wedding? Unusual is the fact that the people who were first invited refused the invitation. More than that, those who refused the invitation did it in a manner that insulted the king and his son, who was going to be married. Some of them showed lack of interest, as if a royal wedding was not worthy of them. Others mocked the people who invited them, yet some showed hostility to those who were presenting them the king's invitation. Strange. They were his subjects, yet showed open hostility to the king who was inviting them. Let's look at it again. But they made light of the invitation and won their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the others took his servants and treated them mockingly and killed them. Now, I heard about people who felt insulted because they were not invited to a certain wedding where they expected to be invited. But here we have people who were insulted because they were invited. Strange, isn't it? The story continues. Due to the fact that the people who were first invited refused the invitation, the king decided to make the invitation universal. All people in his kingdom were invited to the wedding of his son regardless of their low social condition or physical condition or moral condition, rich or poor, healthy or sick, good or bad. They were all invited. What a strange wedding. The king's procedure is shocking us. There was no discrimination. All were invited. His servants were urged to go into the streets, at the crossroads, at the bridges, and persuade as many as they could to come to the wedding. Although the invitation was universal, the king had a condition. Those he invited had to have a special dress, a dress that would render the participants worthy of the royal wedding of his son. Perhaps we think, what is the benefit of being invited to a royal wedding if the condition is a difficult one? How can uh, uh, poor people get the money to purchase such an expensive garment which is fit for such a great king? Again, we are shocked to find out that the king who imposed the condition was offering the garment necessary for the wedding to each one of those he invited. He was offering it for free at the entrance of his palace. Think about it. The wedding was prepared by the king. He spent for the dinner. He extended the invitation to each one of his subjects. He was giving access to each one by sending his servants to invite them and spending his resources to dress up those who were willing to come to his son's wedding. How strange. What an unusual wedding. Again, we are surprised to see something else that happened there. The king was very harsh with those who did not accept the garment he was offering for free. We understood that he was harsh with those who mocked him by refusing the invitation to come to the wedding of his son. He destroyed them all. But to cast out into the darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth, one who was willing to accept the invitation just because he did not have the 
garment? This is hard to understand. The parable ends up with a proverbial saying intending to draw a conclusion, for many are called, but few are chosen. What do we make out of this? I said first that there are strange things related to this wedding, but I also want to point out that there are important things we need to understand related to our eternal destiny that Jesus was talking about in this parable. What we read here is a parable, and a parable is a literary device by which we learn important superior things about things, spiritual things we do not commonly understand. And we learn about these spiritual things looking at common things that we already understand. This parable is intended to teach us things about the kingdom of God. The wedding we read about is not an earthly one, but a divine one, a heavenly one. Is there a heavenly wedding, you're going to ask me? Yes, there is. The Bible, which is the word of God, tells us in its last book, in the last chapters of that book, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, the Lamb is no other than the Son of God, Jesus Christ himself. The Bible talks about the glorious moment when the redeemed ones will gather in the kingdom of God and enjoy the greatest and the happiest event of history, the wedding of the Son of God. In this parable, Jesus, the Son of God himself, is offering us information in order that we make the right decisions and as a result, we will be able to enjoy his kingdom forever. Let us look at the invitation offered to us for that marriage. God himself has prepared his kingdom for us and is urging us to accept his invitation to be part of that great kingdom. Soon the history of mankind will come to an end. Soon we will hear the heavenly voice announcing the marriage of the Lamb is come. The marriage of the Lamb is the event that will end the history as we know it and will inaugurate eternity. It will be an eternity of celebrating and rejoicing with the Savior for those who have accepted his invitation now. <clears throat> God is the King, the great King, who has prepared the wedding for his Son, Jesus Christ. We are invited to this glorious, unimaginable event. You who are part of this earthly wedding, you have been invited to the other wedding. You have been invited to the greatest wedding of all, the marriage of the Lamb. What are you going to do with this invitation? Let us look at the way the invitation was extended. The invitation is offered by special agents of the king. Okay, here's the Bible. The Word of God comprising 70 books, inspired books that tell us about His kingdom, about His Son Jesus Christ who died for us. 70 witnesses telling us about the coming kingdom and the wedding, the celebration of mankind in a perfect society. This invitation is universal. God does not exclude anybody from His kingdom, but people exclude themselves by refusing the invitation. Pay attention to verse 9 where the words of the king are recorded. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. I want you to see that the invitation is persistent. The king's servants were instructed to insist. The Gospel of Luke, which offers us the same parable, has this dialogue between one servant and the king. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Compel them. How much the Lord is insisting that we accept his invitation. Every time you attend a service in a church that proclaims the word of God, you have the privilege to hear again and again this heavenly invitation. You are invited to participate one day in the marriage of the Lamb. Let us look now at the attitudes people have when they are extended the invitation. Some have refused immediately the invitation. Others have mocked the invitation and the servants who are bringing it. Others have turned against those who invited them, persecuting them, even killing them. Some were totally indifferent. 
Now, let me make this thing clear. It does not matter the way people refuse God's invitation. It could be open hostility, or it could be mere negligence. All those who refuse his invitation will have to face the king's wrath. Verse 7 says they were all destroyed by the king. And I'm going to plead with you now. The invitation you just heard about is not coming from a human, but from God. It is not a common invitation, but the invitation to the wedding of his son. By refusing his invitation, you will be excluded from the kingdom of God forever. Your refusal means your destruction. If you neglect such a great salvation, there is no means of escaping the wrath of God. Let us look at the garment necessary for participating at the wedding of the Lamb. The scripture is very clear that we cannot enter the kingdom of God with our clothes. Why not? Because our clothes are dirty before the Lord. The best of our clothes are like filthy rags before the Lord, the Bible says. Some people have a good impression about themselves. They think they are good, but God said, there is not even one who is good in a perfect sense. Uh, they think they are right, but the Bible says there is not even one right person, one righteous person in a perfect sense. Knowing that our garments are not clean, the Lord has provided for us a perfect garment. Do you know which is the perfect garment the Lord is willing to give us as a free gift? It is the righteousness of Christ. Yes, my friend. There is only one way that we sinners with filthy garments can enter at the marriage supper of the Lamb. That way is to accept what Jesus did for us on the cross. He paid for our sins. Our debt has been paid in full. Now he offers us his righteousness as a gift if we accept by faith that he paid for our sins. By believing, we are clothed in Jesus' righteousness and we can enter at the marriage feast of the Lamb. The only garment God will accept on that day is the garment of the righteousness of Jesus. Do you have it? Have you asked for it? Let us look at the fate of the one who refused the garment offered him and came to the wedding dressed up in his own garment. I imagine it was the best he could get. Let me read to you again. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment, and he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Right now you can argue with me, telling me that you are good enough for the kingdom of God, that you don't need his garment, that you have no need for Jesus' righteousness. But let me assure you that on that day, you will be speechless. If you dare present yourself before God dressed in your own good deeds or in your own morality or in your own religiosity, refusing the sacrifice of Jesus for your sins, you will hear the king's voice condemning you. Then said the king to his servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. In the end, people will either be celebrating at the Lamb's marriage feast or they will be facing the wrath of the Lamb. It is either the marriage of the Lamb or the wrath of the Lamb. We all who sit here now in that day will be either sat at his table or cast out in the darkness. And it is you who decide where you will be. This parable stresses the sovereignty of God. He prepares the wedding. He invites people to come to the wedding of his son. He refuses to act in discrimination and offers his invitation to all. He offers the garment we need in order to be able to participate at the marriage feast. And he will have the last word. My prayer for all of us, that all of us here, is that we all accept his invitation and be clothed in Jesus' righteousness so that we will be there at the wedding of the Lamb in his glorious kingdom. And my prayer for Timon and Elinka is that they will have a wonderful married life reflecting in their family the relationship between Christ 
and his church. May the Lord bless them. Amen. Amen. And now returning to the sacred language. Vorbit despre o pildă a Domnului Iisus Hristos, pe care a spus-o într-o împrejurare, când oamenii își dau la masă și unul dintre meseni a conversat cu Domnul Iisus și i-a spus să ferice de acela care va prânzi în Împărăția Lui Dumnezeu. Și Domnul Iisus a spus atunci o pildă foarte interesantă, pilda Fiului de Împărat. Este o pildă cu o, o nuntă extrem de interesantă, intrigantă. Există în această pildă lucruri neobișnuite, care ne pun pe gânduri, ne intrigă. Nu este o nuntă obișnuită, am spus, ci este o nuntă împărătească, nunta Fiului Împăratului. Câtă cinste să fii invitat la o nuntă regească. În, în Vechiul Testament se spune că Solomon a făcut celor care erau în preajma lui daruri bogate, demne de un împărat așa cum era el. Gândiți-vă la un unt aceasta regească despre care vorbește Domnul Iisus Hristos și la cine este împăratul care ne invită la această nuntă. Neobișnuit este faptul că cei invitați au refuzat să onoreze invitația. Mai mult, cei ce au refuzat invitația au făcut-o într-o manieră care a insultat pe împăratul, inclusiv pe fiul său care se pregătea de nuntă. Unii au manifestat totală nepăsare, ca și când invitația împăratului nu ar fi fost vrednică nici de cea mai mică atenție. Alții au badjocorit pe slujitorii împăratului, alții au manifestat ostilitate deschisă, mergând până la punctul că au ucis pe cei care invitau la nunta împăratului. Domnul Iisus ne spune că datorită acestei întâmplări, împăratul a hotărât să facă invitația sa universală. Au fost invitați toți oamenii, indiferent de poziția lor socială, indiferent de condiția lor economică sau, sau fizică, bolnavi, ciungi, orbi, șchiop, spune cuvântul, indiferent de condiția lor morală, buni sau răi, toți au fost invitați. Procedura împăratului ne șochează. Nu s-a făcut nicio discriminare. Toți oamenii, fără deosebire, au fost invitați. Deși invitația a fost universală, împăratul a pus o condiție. La masa sa trebuiau să participe doar cei care aveau o haină specială, o haină vrednică de sărbătoare a fiului său. Probabil că ne gândim ce folos că am invitația dacă nu sunt în stare să-mi procur haina aceea scumpă cu care pot participa. Ei bine, Domnul Iisus ne arată iarăși în pilda sa că împăratul, pe lângă faptul că a pregătit nunta, că a invitat pe toți oamenii, că a cerut celor participanți să aibă o haină specială, a oferit el însuși și haina de sărbătoare tuturor celor care voiau să participe. Din nou, suntem surprinși să vedem un alt lucru care s-a petrecut la nuntă. Împăratul a fost exigent cu unul care nu a acceptat haina lui de nuntă. Înțelegem că a fost aspru cu cei care au refuzat invitația, înțelegem că a fost aspru cu cei care au badjocorit pe slujitorii săi sau i-au omorât, dar s-a exclus de la nunta cea impresionantă pe un personaj care a venit în cele mai bune haine ale sale pentru simplu fapt că nu a acceptat haina ce a fost oferită la intrare. Expunerea se încheie cu o afirmație proverbială, mulți chemați, puțini aleși. Și acum... Care învățătura la care trebuie să luăm noi seama? Pilda este o operă literară care vrea să ne învețe lucruri superioare prin descrierea unor realități comune pe care le cunoaștem toți. Pilda ne ridică ochii de la o nuntă, așa cum o știm noi, la nunta cea mai importantă a istoriei, nunta Domnului Isus Hristos, nunta mielului, așa cum este numită în Cartea Apocalipsă. Evenimentul descris în pildă nu e altceva decât nunta Fiului lui Dumnezeu a Domnului Iisus Hristos cu biserica sa, cu răscumpărații săi. Dumnezeu este împăratul care a pregătit cea mai mare celebrare a istoriei. În curând, istoria, așa cum o știm noi, se va încheia. În curând se va anunța cu glas ceresc, a venit nunta mielului, nunta fiului lui Dumnezeu. În nunta mielului este evenimentul cu care se încheie istoria și se va inaugura veșnicia, o veșnicie a celebrării, a desfătării cu Mântuitorul nostru. Împăratul care a pregătit nunta e însuși Dumnezeu. Nunta este a Fiului Său, Domnul Iisus Hristos. Noi suntem cei pe care Dumnezeu îi invită la această nuntă măreață. Tu, cel care particip azi aici la această nuntă, ești invitat să participi și la nunta cerească a Domnului Iisus Hristos, a Fiului Dumnezeu. Să privim la invitație. Invitația e făcută de crainii speciali și invitația este foarte clară. Ieșiți pe la drumuri, invitați pe toți cei care îi vedeți. Invitația este universală. Nimeni nu a fost exclus de la această 
celebrare anunții Fiului Împăratului. Invitația a fost stăruitoare și cuvântul spune siliții să intre. Să privim latitudinea oamenilor față de invitație. Unii au refuzat categoric invitația. Alții au bagiocorit pe cei care invitau și alții s-au întors împotriva celor care invitau și i-au persecutat sau chiar i-au dat morții. Ceea ce îmi vorbește despre depravarea totală a ființei umane. Biblia spune că omul este total depravat și unii se miră și refuză să creadă această doctrină biblică. Știți în ce se vede totala depravarea omului? Nu în faptul că omul este păcătos, ci în faptul că atunci când se oferă mântuirea în dar prin Domnul Isus Hristos, o refuză și se întoarce împotriva celui care îi oferă cel mai mare dar, salvarea. Indiferent de modul în care omul refuză invitația cerului, cei care refuză invitația vor avea de a face cu mânia împăratului, vor fi nimiciți. Dragul meu, consideră încă o dată invitația. Nu este a unui om, e a lui Dumnezeu. Nu e o nuntă obișnuită, ci nunta fiului său. Nu refuz pe un om când refuz această invitație, ci pe suveranul veșniciei. Nu bagiocorești pe semenii tăi, ci îl bagiocorești pe fiul lui Dumnezeu când refuz să particip la această nuntă. Și nu refuz să particip la un eveniment oarecare, ci la împărăția veșnică a lui Dumnezeu. Refuzul va fi întâmpinat cu distrugere veșnică. Să privim la haina care este necesară. Scriptura este foarte clară, nu putem intra în împărăția lui Dumnezeu cu hainele noastre, pentru că sunt murdare, suntem păcătoși. Singura haină cu care putem intra la evenimentul acela veșnic, cosmic, nunta Fiului, este să acceptăm haina neprihănirii Domnului Isus Hristos pe care Dumnezeu ne oferă. O ai, vei intra. Crezi că hainele tale sunt bune? Vei fi aruncat în întunericul de afară. În final, oamenii vor avea parte fie de nunta mielului, fie de mânia mielului. Tu însuți hosărăști unde vei fi, la care eveniment vei participa. Toată pilda relefiază suveranitatea lui Dumnezeu. El a pregătit nunta, el invită pe oameni, el refuză să facă discriminare, el îți oferă haina și el are ultimul cuvânt. Rugăciunea mea este ca toți cei care am participat aici la această nuntă să avem harul și privilegiu să participăm la cealaltă, mult mai importantă, care este nunta mielului a Domnului Isus Hristos. Și putem să participăm cu toții dacă astăzi ne afirmăm credința sinceră și totală în Domnul Isus Hristos. Prin El putem să participăm la acel eveniment binecuvântat. Fie ca Dumnezeu să ne facă parte tuturor celor care nu au zis cuvântul Său de această de acest privilegiu impresionant de a sta la masă împreună cu Domnul Isus Hristos în împărăția sa veșnică. Amin. Amin. Ok. We have come to the point of uh, exchanging the vows. I will ask the two to stand up. I'm going to read to them passage in Romanian first, and then I will try to do my best to translate it into English. Astfel dar, ca niște aleși ale Lui Dumnezeu sfinți și prea iubiți, îmbrăcați-vă cu o inimă plină de îndurare, cu bunătate, cu zmerenie, cu blândețe, cu îndelungă răbdare. Îngăduiți-vă unii pe altul. Și dacă unul are pricină să plângă de altul, iertați-vă unul pe altul. Cum v-a iertat Hristos, așa iertați-vă și voi. Dar mai presus de toate acestea, îmbrăcați-vă cu dragostea care este legătura de săvârșirii. Pacea lui Hristos, la care ați fost chemați ca să alcătuiți un singur trup, să stăpânească în inimile voastre și fiți recunoscători. Cuvântul lui Hristos să locuiască din belșug în voi, în toată înțelepciunea. Învățați-vă și sfătuiți-vă unul pe altul cu psalm, cu cântări de laudă și cu cântări duhovnicești, cântând lui Dumnezeu cu mulțumire în inima voastră. 
Și orice faceți cu cuvântul sau cu fapta să faceți totul în numele Domnului Isus Hristos și mulțumiți prin El lui Dumnezeu Tatăl. Amin. Ok, let's stand up. God loves you and has chosen you as His own special people. So be gentle, kind, humble, meek and patient. Put up with each other and forgive anyone who does you wrong. Just as Christ has forgiven you. Love is more important than anything else. It is what ties everything completely together. Each one of you is part of the body of Christ and you were chosen to live together in peace. So let the peace that comes from Christ control your thoughts and be grateful. Let the message of Christ completely fill your lives while you use all your wisdom to teach and instruct each other. With thankful hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. Whatever you say or do should be done in the name of the Lord Jesus as you give thanks to God for the Father because of Him. Amen. I, Timon. I, Timon. Take you, Ilinka. Take you, Ilinka. To be my wife. To be my wife. Before God who brought us together. Before God who brought us together. To love and cherish you. To love and cherish you. Even as Christ loved the church. Even as Christ loved the church. And gave himself for it. And gave himself for it. To lead you. To lead you. And share all. And share all. Of life experiences with you. Of life experiences with you. By following God through them. By following God through them. That through His grace. That through His grace. We might grow together. We might grow together. Into the likeness of Jesus Christ. Into the likeness of Jesus Christ. Our Savior and Lord. Our Savior and Lord. And with this ring. And with this ring. I Ilinka. I Ilinka. Take you, Timon. Take you, Timon. To be my husband. To be my husband. Before God who brought us together. Before God who brought us together. To love you. To love you. Cherish you. Cherish you. To submit myself unto you. To submit myself unto you. In all things. In all things. And to follow you. And to follow you. Through all of life experiences. Through all of life's experiences. As you follow God. As you follow God. That through His grace. That through His grace. We might grow together. We might go grow through get together. Into the likeness of Jesus Christ. Into the likeness of Jesus Christ. Our Savior and Lord. Our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now, as a token of your unending, of your love, you are going to exchange the rings. Okay, now, while the two are going to kneel down, I'm asking the parents to come and give them the blessings. Uh, our Father in heaven, we thank you for the great mercy and for the great grace that you have shown to Timon and Alinka yes, Lord. in that by faith in your son you have claimed them as your own. Thank you that they have through your grace not by works of their own righteousness or not by things that they have done but according to your mercy you have saved them. Thank you Lord. Thank you that they are your workmanship yes. created in Christ Jesus unto good works, that they should walk in them. We thank you that on this day, as this special new part of your workmanship is being made, as a brand new body is being created. Thank you, Lord. That you will help them to give their body unto the Lord as a reasonable sacrifice. Yes. It is acceptable by you and is honored by you and that they will not be conformed to the world but they will be transformed in this new body yes. 
by the renewing of their mind, that they may prove what is that good and what is that acceptable in your perfect will. Yes, Lord. Pray for Timon specifically, that he will study to show himself approved unto you. Yes, Lord. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Amen. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Yes, Lord. That he will find from your word how it is to love his wife. Amen. And you will teach him and you will instruct him in the way that he should go. Yes, Lord. And for Alinka, we pray that you will continue to increase in her the act of submission to her husband and the reverence to him as, he, as she sees your work of yes, discipline Lord. and of repentance and of work in Timon's life. Yes, Lord. That together, that they will show forth the love of Jesus Christ. Teach them to be patient with one another. Yes, Teach Lord. them to love one another. Amen. Teach them to abhor evil Amen. and to cleave to that which is good. Yes, Lord. Help them to be directed in their steps to bring honor and glory to Christ. Amen. So that through this new body which is being created, you can receive all the honor and all the glory and all the praise. In yes, Jesus' Lord. name we pray. Amen. Amen. Îți mulțumim, Tată din Ceruri, pentru că în această zi Tu ai unit pe Timon cu Ilinca. Mulțumim, Doamne. Tu ai spus că omul să nu fie singur și îți mulțumim că Tu ai instituționalizat căsătoria, Doamne. Da. Îți mulțumim, în primul rând, pentru faptul că amândoi te cunosc pe Tine. Da, Doamne. Te-ai îndurat de sufletele lor, de viața lor și i-ai făcut copii ai Tăi, Slavă Doamne. Ție. De aceea te lăudăm și te binecuvântăm. Da. Tu ai spus că dacă căutăm mai întâi de toate împărăția cerurilor, toate celelalte lucruri le vom primi în dar ca o binecuvântare. Da. ajută ca să te caute întâi pe tine și atunci viața lor va fi împlinită din toate punctele de vedere. Amin. Pentru că funia împletită în trei nu se poate rupe niciodată. Îți mulțumim pentru ei, pentru că te caută pe tine, Sunt pentru ei. că fac parte din biserica ta, da, pentru da. că vor să te slujească, vor să asculte de cuvântul tău, Doamne. Sunt și atunci toate aceste lucruri sunt o protecție pentru ei și pentru viața lor, Doamne. Binecuvintează începutul, Doamne. Binecuvintează toată viața lor, Doamne. Binecuvintează și rodul vieților, Doamne. Iar noi îți mulțumim și te lăudăm pentru că această căsătorie știm că este inițializată de tine, Doamne, și are toate șansele ca să dureze până la sfârșit. Da. Pentru toate îți mulțumim, te lăudăm și te binecuvântăm, Tată din ceruri, în numele scump al Domnului Isus și prin puterea Duhului Sfânt. Amin. Amin. And now we are pleased to present to you the new family, Timon and Elinka Williams. May the Lord bless them. What the Lord has united, let no man put asunder. You may kiss the bride. Amen. 